Speaking of, you know, rare cases. See, I didn't really have too much tonight. But speaking of rare cases, right? Diddy has come across a couple of interesting ones recently. Starting with this uh, Derek Cordell Smith one. In which this gentleman was getting a restraining order on Diddy, as well as stopping him from selling all his business assets from jail. I was, uh, you know, quite taken back because I'm like, wait a minute. How is that even possible that someone could even do that? But then this person also claimed that Diddy raped them. That Diddy had, uh, had boofed them in a club. Drugged them up and did what the diddler does. So, Mr. Mister Derek Lee here. You Derek Lee Cardello Smith, sir? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right, thank you. This is in the matter of Derek Lee Cardello Smith, um, MDOC number 267-009 versus Sean Combs, Sean Puff Daddy Combs, also known as Sean P. Diddy, also known as Diddy, Bad Boy Records, label owner, comma, founder, also known as Puff P. Daddy, comma, Bad Boy, Diddy Run the City, comma, Sean Combs, also known as Sean Puffy Combs. And this is file number 24-7362-NO. We'll grab your paperwork here real quick out of this other paperwork. We do have Mr. Cardello Smith appearing from the Michigan Department of Corrections. Sir, where are you currently located? I'm located at the Ernest C. Brooks Correctional Facility, 2500 South Sheridan Drive, Muskegon, Michigan, 49444, ma'am. All right, thank you, sir. Or your honor. Um, I, thank you. So I do see that we do have a proof of service um, on um, Mr. Combs. But for purposes of this hearing, you filed a motion for a temporary restraining order and or a preliminary injunction to stop all sales of the property and assets attached to or involved with said property based on the interest of plaintiff and plaintiff's connections to defendant's sexual assault of plaintiff Derek Lee Cardello Smith requiring a preliminary injunction and or a temporary restraining order. We did set that for hearing today. And luckily the Brooks Correctional Facility was able to make you available. Actually, they had to drive someone up today on another case. So sir, um, I have received your motion and a proposed order. Do you wish to argue the motion today, sir? Yes, yes, your honor. All right, you may proceed then. Okay, the, pur the purpose of it is based on two actions taken by Mr. Combs himself, directly with me here. We did a uh, live one-on-one -on -one visit in our prison visiting room. Uh, there's two meetings within the past two weeks with Mr. Combs on one meeting, and then a financial advisor on the other meeting on Mr. Combs' behalf. And he stated that he would make me an offer to end the case and what happened to me because of other things that he stated he has going on in his life that require his money right now and he wants to sell every, sell everything off. And he made me a financial offer of $2.3 million to allow what happened to me to go away. And he stated that he's gonna be selling his property and under the, Cal under the 2005 California Civil Code 2881-2885, the creation of liens, which allows out of state justices and orders to cause a, a stop of any title transfer, property transfers in Los Angeles or any other place that he has property. He stated that he wouldn't be able to proceed with that sale. And he did it the day after I served him the uh, suit. And he also said that he won't be filing an answer to the uh, complaint. He said, you can find me in default or whatever. He has a better chance with default than he would with having a restraining order stop. And I said, so you want to hide what you you want to hide your money and stop from being, being quite possibly paid to me if I'm given the benefit of a judgment in my favor for what you've done to me. And he pretty much said, yeah, he goes, you know how we get down. And I said, okay, well, I disagree with how you get down. I know that's right. 
He said, I disagree with how you get down. Bruh said, listen, you trying to hide all of your assets right now just so you don't have to pay me? A bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. You ain't getting away from me. You ain't getting away from me that easy. Mm-mm. You, so you basically telling me that you trying to hide all your assets now by and selling all your properties. I'm the wrong nigga to get that information. As well as I'm sitting right across from your advisor, your financial advisor confirming this. Ooh, shit. Let me go to the court with this. Not only am I getting a restraining order, but now I'm going to stop you from being able to even get this off. Now, there ain't going to be no you selling this off to get have some money on the side. See, that's the thing. Did he, the diddler done fucked up and told somebody that he was trying to you know, run off on the plug. He didn't fucked up and told them the wrong information. Did that damn Tusi? I, I tell you, that Tusi don't got Diddy thinking smart at all. You you checking Justin Bieber on on you know on camera for for wires and shit, and you doing all type of craziness right now, brother. You you telling inmates your your business? How you going to tell an inmate that that you sell all your shit? To have some money for legal fees. Your sales shouldn't go through. So if you... I'm going to hold on. I'm sorry. Mr. I'm sorry. Cadello Smith. Okay. So you went in a different direction than I thought you were going into. I thought we I'm were sorry. just going to focus. No, no, no. Um, we are. You kind of um, went off in a different direction than what yeah. your actual motion was. Yeah. So um, what I just want to say is um, settlement negotiations. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. In this case, they're probably better not. Yeah, they're yes. not for to be placed on I'm the sorry. record today. Okay. I apologize. Um, no, no, no. It's okay. You're not an attorney. I understand that. So if we can just um, okay. backtrack and understand this too. Again, you see, he ain't no ain't got no lawyer up there. The nigga that's just sitting down there, he's listening. <laughs> he's just listening recording. Uh, Derek is representing himself. So that just tells you the level of intellect that Derek is. Mr. Smith is up there representing himself. No lawyer needed. That's why I'm looking at the dude at the bottom camera. I'm like, what you even here for? Just to record shit that's going on? Focus just on your yes, motion. I get what you want. Okay, thank you. If he's allowed to sell his property that he has in L.A. and the properties that are in his name being used and held by other people in Michigan then it will cause me harm because I can be tied directly to those properties through loans and through other areas of investment that I did when I was out there and while in prison through money that I've sent. So pretty much he's clearing his own name by doing this restraining order. He's he's pretty much stopping Diddy from doing that so that he cannot be involved in any of the diddler's doings as far as investments go. Because as you just heard, he was involved in some of the moving around of the money back then, as well as he was involved in some of the investments that were made. So he's saying, hey, hey, put a cease and desist on that bullshit. Put a cease and desist on that because I don't want my name involved in anything. I'm already serving enough time right now. You put a restraining order on Diddy so he's not able to even do any of that. You you put a stop to that shit. I don't want my name involved in any of this shit that he's doing right now just because he needs some money. Especially since you're trying to avoid paying me. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. And if he's allowed to go through with any of the sales... I won't be able to recoup any of my monies or anything from him as a result of any possible judgment in this action, if he's allowed to proceed with it. And a, an injunction or a restraining order would help ensure that he's not manipulating and selling the property to avoid oh, this, his responsibility in these matters here. That's what a temporary restraining order would do. It would prevent that from happening. Because you, uh, it's a very serious matter. It involves a lot of money, a lot of money, and and him selling this is would help him avoid his liability for these actions done upon me. 
And I was just hoping that I'd be able to get the restraining order to prevent that. There won't be any harm to them, any any of the parties. There won't be any harm to them in any way. And if it's deemed that it's not justified, then he can go ahead and go through with the cell at the end of the, of the case. But one has to be put in place to stop this from happening. Okay. Um, okay. So thank you very much. Um, yes. Hold on. I'm just looking back through your complaint. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to check one more of your filings. So no, uh, I'm going to step brother? off the bench for two seconds and I'll be right back. All right. Yes, Judge Anzalone. Thank you. You with the defense? No, sir. I'm having a hearing and uh, they stopped the hearing so you could be heard. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice tie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Couldn't wear one. They don't give us ties. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a reason for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> but they have clip ons, you know. Yeah. Clip ons are the best, aren't they? <laughs> crazy how he had his whole hearing just sitting up here too like I wonder if I could still find Jonathan Adi's full interrogation I wonder if I could find John you know what you know what? After that, I think we're going to go through Jonathan Adi because we haven't listened to Jonathan Adi's full thing yet. Uh, people don't people have it, but I have Jonathan Adi's full interrogation, but I want it's only up to a certain part. The interrogation is only up to a certain right, so part. I want his thank full you, like sir. hours. Is there anything shit. else you wish to add? Um there there uh I was just First off, just thank you for giving me the hearing and thank you for setting a pretrial on this matter. Thank you, Your Honor. There were some other filings. There were some other filings that you should have gotten. I didn't know um, if that's one I, of the filings you could have been referring to. So I received your complaint and all the attachments to it. And then I received this motion. Um, and I just wanted to review, take a moment to review back through the U.S. Okay. District Civil Docket and your complaint. So I did do that. Um, that's all. And yes. um, okay. okay. Anything else? All of the, everything that you're looking at, they're all tied in together. Every part, as crazy as this seems, as outrageous as it seems, it all ties in. Every bit of it, every facet. Okay. All right. Well, I have um, a proof of service showing. That Mr. Combs was served on July 6th um, of 2000 and let me see, is that 24? Yes, yeah. yeah. Looks like it. 2024 return receipt requested was provided. So there is proper service. Mr. Combs has neither appeared nor responded to this um, request. Look at that. So even that, th that's why he felt confident enough to even represent himself because he had been paying attention to the filings as well. He noticed that him nor the lawyer has even been responding to this shit. So he said, all right, you know what? Let me get a follow up hearing, represent myself and make sure this shit get pushed through correctly. That's a smart dude, yo. Derek, shout out to you. So I'm going to grant your motion for a preliminary injunction to a restraining order. And order that the defendant and their agents are hereby enjoined temporarily for a period of 90 days from the sale, transfer, or exchange, trade, or transaction of title or deed to the property listed as the address. Put a hold on that bitch. 
put a hold on that one. Hold that diddler. <laughs> hold that one, diddler. She said, judgment go in favor of the plaintiff. Oh, pro- you ain't nothing going down now. Nothing, ain't nothing moving unless I move, bruh. Ain't nothing moving unless I say it's going down. That is smooth right there. That's smooth criminal shit right there. No pun intended. That's smooth criminal shit right there. Bruh said, you've been hit by smooth criminal. <laughs> Stop the diddler dead in his tracks. So if you wonder why he's been, you know, if you wonder why, you know, the the diddler is just pretty much in confusion right now, trying to figure out what's even happening. This is probably why. This is why he's been, you know, even more quiet than he has been. I'm late. There's a lot going on. What a dude watch too much reality. You know, it, it, not necessarily, not necessarily, but, um. Yeah, the dealer is his. How, how do you just how, how you do this from jail, though? You got to be a very, very intelligent brother. To even think of this and say, yo, he's trying to. Oh, I see what you're really doing. You doing this for your legal fees. Like he t- did. He told him too much. Did he told him entirely too much as far as he was trying to sell the properties to have some money? Bro, you supposed to be a billionaire. You ain't supposed to be selling shit. You ain't supposed to be just out here broke. Damn near uh, bankruptcy like Donald Trump. What's going on? Derek caught hip to that. Salute, brother. Salute. Derek caught real quick hip to that. Say, all right, I got something for your ass. I got something for your ass. For the whole, and that's the thing. People think a restraining order just means just for domestic violence. You got a crazy baby mama that won't leave you alone. Crazy baby daddy won't leave you alone type shit. Nah, you can do restraining orders on niggas shit. They can't even sell. <laughs> niggas can't even sell their own shit. Imagine that. I didn't even know you could do that. When I first heard this whole thing about restraining order, I was like, okay, maybe he getting a restraining order. He won't get raped again. All right, I get that part. He, he think the dealer going to come for him in jail and shit. I get that part. But then when I hear the restraining order was to get like a cease and desist on Diddy being able to sell his own shit. I said, wait, you can do that. You can stop a nigga from selling his own property or selling his own assets. I did not know that. That's that's gangster. That's gangster right there. He stopped him from selling his own shit. Just put a roadblock on your whole shit. Nope. Can't move it. Imagine this like Monopoly. And Diddy really just landed on jail. And can't do shit now. <laughs> just can't, can't do shit now. Can't, can't sell nothing. Can't take no money in. Can't, can't collect nothing. Your money just going to say, going back to the piss pot. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! That's that's hard right there. Placed on the market by defendants for the amount of seventy million dollars, and this property and estate belonging to or connected to defendant Sean Combs shall cease and desist any and all trades, transactions, or otherwise stop the process of any further actions on this property being continued. And this shall have an immediate effect. I'm going to date this August seventh of 2024 and I am going to sign this and um, we are set for a pretrial date on Monday, September 9th of 2024 at 2.30 p.m. Is there Your anything Honor? else? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Um, first off, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, the second thing is um, under the summons rules and the court rules of service, Mr. Combs, the defendant, had 28 days after he was served by mail, 21, if it's regular process service. His 28th day was the August 3rd, and there was no answer on the default. And I understand that I have to motion verbally or in writing, whichever one you prefer at your, however you prefer, to have default judgment entered. And today is the, literally the 28, 30, 31, 32nd day, I believe. And I'd like to, to either preserve the issue of default judgment or judgment in my favor. 
based on failure to answer. Juju, what okay. up? Juju, what up? Yo, he is cold with it. He said, look, I want default on my judgment, damn it. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I understand I won the verdict. I already knew I was going to win that. But damn it, now I want my default. Now I want my default. Now I want this paperwork too. I want my default for him not even responding. I want that in paperwork. Yo, this brother cold with it. He cold with it. Because here I'm saying to myself, well, what he want with that for? What he want with that? What is he, what is he doing with that? But then I thought about it. He got some shit later on for Diddy. It's, it's not even just down to the, he needs the proof. It's not just the part that he needs the proof with him not responding. It's the fact that he needs that for someone else. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, because y'all can still forget. Cassie is working with the feds. Don't forget that part. With Cassie working with them feds, we liable to hear all type of shit come down this pipeline right now. For him to even know to do that, that told me a lot more. That told me a lot more with him saying he wants his default. Whichever you're on, um, would like. Right. Thank you. Um, typically, we require that. Um, Miss McGrain. Look, she's scratching her wig. She oh, said, oh, shit, this man here. know his shit. Oh, he know um, his I'm, shit. I'm, hold on. I'm, I'm talking to my judicial attorney. Typically, we require the um, bro. motion. Look, bro looked up. So you talking to me? <laughs> for the affidavit and motion for default be filed. So I just. Miss Adams is Miss McGrain in her office. She is not. I'm going to go find her right now, Judge. Okay. I know. Hold I on. read that rule. I read the rule, Your Honor. Uh, MCR 2.603 governs that. And it said the party can do it in front of the trial court judge or yeah. Yeah. by mail. Whatever you want. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me get that. Usually you require it. Can you hear her, Mr. Sala? Miss McGrain marching down the hallway. She sounds like a herd of cats. <laughs> Green Bay, you just reminded me of something. Thank you. About Foxy. All right. Okay. So, sir, um, the court rule that you're referring to, it's not a trial date, so I, I think I'm right. So you're going to have to file the affidavit and request for a default, okay? Okay. Yes, you are. And um, obviously, you'll be able to file that before a pretrial date anyway, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so right, the order so was granted? The order, your, your ex parte motion was granted, or your motion for a temporary restraining order was granted. I've signed it. And so we'll get that processed and back to you. And then you'll have to obviously serve that on the parties. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can your order right. say any, uh, your honor, can you add on your order any any Michigan representatives of him acting on his behalf for Michigan properties as well as part of that order? Or does that, does your order cover everything? You provided the order. So I'm going off. Yes, of I did. Order. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, so I'm going off the order you provided to me, and I've signed okay, that order that's, already. That's what okay. I needed. Thank you. All right, thank All right, you, Your thank Honor. You, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Car Bro, I said I'm making sure. I'm just making sure. You ain't missed nothing. You ain't missed too much, uh, Juju. We was um so <coughs> excuse me. So mainly we went over um <coughs> briefly we went over Drake. We said rest in peace to uh, Psycho Sid, and uh, yeah, th thank you, Ruby, for the rundown real quick. Um. Yeah, this dude getting paid by Diddy, so he clamped down from prison. Pretty much, that's a, that's a great summary of things. <laughs> that's a great summary of things. Like I said, aside from um, rest in peace to Psycho Sid and Drake trying to bait on bullshit, this is pretty. This was the uh, way where you caught up to Mr. Ju. Is uh, this gentleman here pretty much getting a cease and desist on the Diddler selling his assets? 
which I thought was absolute genius. I think this is absolute genius. Not only is he pretty much, you know, he's making it so he isn't involved in any of the bullshit that he's trying to do as far as getting rid of his assets and money and trying to gain some type of capital to pay for the lawyer fees and things like that. It's one of those things where, like I said, it's it's very, very smart of him to even be doing, in my opinion. So, Derek, Derek Smith, you, you a legend for that, for even thinking of that. You are a legend for that. Now, I did come across something else. Speaking of which, real quick, um, because I don't want to get, matter of fact, I don't want to get off the topic. But I guess we'll, it, it kind of is on topic. So Jaguar Wright had mentioned something in regards to Foxy Brown on Real Life. And I want to see if I can pinpoint where she said it at real quick. Real Life Street Star. But I believe it was right here. Discover. And then they watch you crash out. Full circle. Full circle. Justin Bieber on those drums. Justin Bieber singing "Baby, Baby, Baby." Justin Bieber. Okay, yeah, it's 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 Detroit about right song. here where Justin she mentioned Bieber something that was going on in the courts with Foxy. By Jaden, Justin Bieber on all of those tapes. I'm starting to feel like maybe when they shut down all the prostitution in the back pages of the little circulars. And yeah, yeah Gary, you know, Gary know the game. Derek know the YouTube. game too well, man. That was too smooth. That was too cold. This is starting to look like. a Reading ground, bro. Mm. Justin Bieber was on YouTube. I vouch for that. Dropped off to the diddler. And now he's sucking calabasas. <laughs> Damn. Uh, From the flavor freak off. That's exactly what's in the Keefe D uh, filings. Okay, uh, Foxy really being near the night pot got shot. On YouTube? It, well, you don't want them. You don't want the Diddy stories to follow. I mean, no, you don't. It, yeah, you don't. But I, I think we need to start seeing. It. Is, I mean, I mean, YouTube is it's a dangerous construct. It is like you just sat there, and, and we just had a great conversation with my friend Tiffany, my Correct. new friend Tiffany. Correct. And I am emboldened cruelty-free artistry, right? Yes. It's time for us to fight for Tiffany. Agreed. There's a YouTuber who I've liked, but I suspected she was an information agent. I won't call her an agent of chaos and I won't call her a disinformationist. Because the truth is, is most of her intel and everything that she says is very good. Um, at one point in time, she actually wanted to talk to me until she was dissuaded not to. You don't have to worry about that, Tisa. I won't tell nobody. <laughs> but Tisa tells, just a couple of days ago, before we came here to Dallas, went after Tiffany Haddish. I mean, went after her. Out of just started talking about the DUIs and started talking about her case in Georgia and started talking about how reckless she was and how everybody else might want to give her a pass, but she ain't playing around with Tiffany because she's out here putting people's lives in jeopardy. And did... Like, out of nowhere while she's in Africa. Like, <laughs> Tiffany's done a lot of great philanthropic work this year. Nobody's talking about that. Right. Correct. The prom went really well. It did get noticed on television in LA, but it didn't get national coverage like it should have. Who's promoting line clouds? She's technically not allowed to because of the case in Georgia. So now this product that she curated, she has to stop and wait or get someone else to promote for her because technically it's a bad look for her to be promoting her lines when she's got a weed charge. <laughs> I no, mean, no, no, but this is how they. This is how the Illuminati works. Mm. It doesn't matter what you do. 
they will find a linchpin to hold you tight. That's why they don't like people like me. I'm a breakaway. I'm an outlier. You spoke on Diddy. Can I ask you, um, is this is this is there still smoke on Diddy, or do you feel like it's? Oh no 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 no. The smoke. They they they're trying to figure out how to evenly distribute the smoke. Oh, wow. here you go. Because this is what I was looking for. Got train smoke coming, and me and Gene have really been trying to, and because I see Gene, he's struggling so hard not to say more. Um, we all know where this shit is going. And we also know that there are a lot of other people being affected. And from what I was um, privy to hearing, I believe it was supposed to be clickbait, but then it kind of lined up with some other information that I got. Jay-Z was recently questioned about his involvement in bringing underage girls to freak offs. Mm. And apparently some of the testimony that they've gotten from Foxy Brown for the Keep It You trial is now starting to blow back on the Carter. Dang. Did you see that um uh, some of the testimony that they've gotten from Foxy Brown for the Keep It You trial is now starting to blow back on the Carter. Dang. Did you see that um In case uh, you missed it. Ice Cube. In case you missed what she was saying, what what Fury B also said in the chat was that pretty much Foxy Brown being there the night Pac got shot is starting to blow back on Mr. Jay Z. And now he's being questioned on his involvement in possibly bringing underage women to these freak offs. And it's a lot of evidence there. I'm pretty sure they have a lot of pictures, which if they have pictures of him hanging with Diddy, we're talking about the feds here. So the feds have the hip hop police have pictures of Jay, you know, let's also, you know, let's be a little bit more realistic in things. here, Okay. We are still talking about Jay-Z, okay? This is someone that raps about having ties with the feds and the police. So let's also put that into perspective. Jay being questioned by feds, meaning Jay knows that he was already going to be questioned by the feds. That's what I hear when I hear that part. That Jay already knew that he was going to be questioned by the feds, and that's why he had been on the run for so long trying to stay away from the diddler that's what i hear when i hear that he's being questioned right now on top of he's already seen the pictures he knows what evidence they have of him already how old were when you dated what um the reason how old were well besides even dating corrupt yeah how old were you when you dated corrupt how old were you dating jay we broke that down on iceberg slim when I did Jay's black book, Jay had a plethora of women that were way under his age and not even underage as much as there was always that 10 year gap damn near. Jay ain't never date a bitch that was his age. That's the part that people wanted to uh, question. Why are you only dating women that's 10 years your senior? And then you see the Drakes alike following suit with that as well. Well, that's the thing. Jay never was out of circulation. He just been trying to stay out of the light. Well, that would be kind of crazy if he is. That would be kind of crazy if he is. Because I remember back in the, in the I think it was the 97 interview where he talked about um, him not necessarily even having any malice towards him, but that was a well-known lie because Pac hated that nigga guts. To his grave, Pac hated that nigga guts. He hated Jay to his he hate he fucking hated Jay to his guts. Ain't nothing Jay could do to change that whatsoever. He took that to the grave. Before Nas said fuck Jay, Pac, Pac been on, on Jay on Jay neck. But that was one of the reasons why it's very well known. It's very well known. And then like I said, when I read the lyrics of um 
You are the man of the night. When I read them lyrics, we did with Blackstreet. And he's he's basically talking about some. And just like your spirit, the commission remains. When when he's rapping those lyrics, talking as if he pretty much had something to do with the involvement of Biggie's death. I'm talking about Jay. When I hear Jay rapping like he had some type of involvement with City is Mine, that was the record. If you look at the lyrics, as a matter of fact, I'll pull up the lyrics for you real quick. I'll pull up the lyrics for you real quick. If you look at the lyrics again of City is Mine, this is this, just because we on on live. And I know some of y'all don't necessarily remember. But I remember when my uncle pointed this out to me. And I, at first, I didn't think anything of it, but. Just the lyrics alone of City is Mine, right? Well, I'll just read it. I'll just read it while it's up here because I got something else to show. Uh, you belong to this. So, with the deal, Playboy, just rest the soul. I'll be holding it down, yo. Still love the dough. Got these ladies on cock now. You know how we go. Got the whole world locked down. You know how we flow. Don't worry about Brooklyn. I'll continue to flame. Therefore, a world with the amnesia won't forget your name. You see how he put the, the play on worlds right there? Therefore, a world with amnesia won't forget your name. So basically, he knows that within the coming years, of course, through the fast life of social media and whatnot, that his name possibly will get lost in the sauce. But he's going to keep represent. He's going to basically keep using his lyrics. He's going to keep saying his name. Him and Diddy are pretty much going to be eating off of the fact that you passed. We're going to just, you know, even though everybody's going to forget oh, all this shit happened, we're going to say, you know what? Hey, 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 hey. We got you. Got the whole world. Okay, so therefore, a world with needs to get you. You held it down long enough. Let me take those reins. And just like your spirit, the commission remains. Now, this part here got tricky. Niggas can cross the T's and dot the I's. Now, that I got too popular to cop them pies. I'm taking this rap shit serious to my demise. Jay shit like cakes mix, watch me rise. But basics in the basement wasted, asking my dog for advice. And when he can't say shit, my hatred is fueled. Just give me a sign and I'll let the world know that the city is mine. That part right there, asking my dog for advice. And when he can't say shit, my hatred is fueled. Just give me a sign and I'll let the world know that the city is mine. He's basically just letting you know right there. He was super jealous of Big. Hove was jealous of Big. They met back. We're talking about early nine six, nine five nine six. This is when Diddy uh, first met Jay. Biggie talked about that all the time. Nine five nine six is when Diddy first met Jay because um, he brought Jay to the. Uh, matter of fact, it was um. The Dead President's video shoot. Remember when Biggie wasn't supposed to be there and they were playing Monopoly with real money and Biggie wasn't necessarily supposed to be there. He's supposed to be doing some other shit and he was late. They told a story about that. Biggie was actually, he wasn't supposed to be at that video shoot for Dead Presidents and he was actually late for some other shit with Diddy. And Diddy pretty much pulled up on them like, and they, they got Biggie out of there. But that was how Jay and Diddy actually met because Diddy actually got respect for Jay even seeing that. Like, oh, yeah, niggas playing Monopoly with real money. Y'all doing shit like that. Y'all, y'all doing. Okay, I see y'all. y'all. Y'all doing wavy shit. I mean, so their respect came from that. Him being able to pull his artist Biggie Smalls over to a video shoot. And niggas is playing dice with real, niggas is playing Monopoly with real money. Okay, that type of fly shit. All right. So that was how their. Uh, relationship initially started it was through of course biggie smalls which again it definitely like i said starts to make me wonder what jay's involvement is even in the death of biggie okay especially yes being jealous of big and Pac and big l because jag specifically talked about that a couple of times to where he was so jealous of big l as well and there's little rumors here and there about him having something to do with the offing of Big L too. So there's not too much evidence out there, but there's a lot of people pretty much putting that bug in the ear that Jay has something to do with the offing of Big L as well and how he passed away. Um, 
but yeah, that was that little tidbit I wanted to catch right there was Jaguar Wright letting y'all know about, you know, them even questioning, you know, Jay right now. The fact that they're even questioning Jay right now lets me know that they're even possibly digging into Kathy White. So, with them digging into Kathy White, you can only imagine, you can only imagine what is to possibly come from that as well. That's what I did, bro. I called him up and called him out. This nigga got the most awkward walk I ever seen in my entire life. This nigga got you can you can tell when nigga is awkward, confused. I'm not sure if I should be here. Let me run it back real quick. You see how awkward did he walking right now? That's what I did, bro. I called him up and called him out. See that creep ass walk he doing right there? That's what I did, bro. I called him up and called him out. Meanwhile, Stevie J walking on the sand with, with uh, I can't tell if that's sneakers or slippers. What the hell is he even got on his damn feet? But the awkwardest walk, the, the, the predator walk damn near that you see Diddy walking with. Yes, it looks, looks so pathetic now. Looks so pathetic now. On top of he just looked lost. No, he, he, he just looked so lost in the world. Like he just know he ain't supposed to be outside. Where's our stuff at? Hey, he taking a deep breath, like Stevie J. Why are you asking him to come over here? There's a lot of pressure. Look at that, he tried to... He tried to... He tried to... He tried to go... He tried to... Love. Let me smack his hand. <laughs> Get that love shot. Him <laughs> throw some damn love. You ain't love, Cassie. <laughs> you ain't love, Cassie. And I'm saying, I'm saying to myself, the crowd of people that started to come around, I don't think that that was necessarily a thing of. Um, I don't think they was all trying to show love. I think people started to ask him some questions, and he got the hell up out of there when it started to get crowded. That's what that started to look like right there. If you if you really pay attention did, to it, bro, as it started to get home. as it started to this get crowded, the most dangerous drug of them all. <laughs> And he started to do his little thing. One, two. It, it it wasn't so easy for him to just be around anymore. That's what I did, bro. I called him up. Okay, so that's the same. That's the same uh, repeat angle. But yeah, like I said, you could tell he wasn't too welcomed on that beach, wherever the hell he is right now. If it were one of these women, I'd post the flick. With the location and tag the FBI. You stupid, yo. I'm pretty sure there was some people looking on that beach. There are some people that was sitting on that beach and Googling their phone trying to see if there was reward money out for this nigga. I guarantee you. I guarantee to you. Everybody was sitting on their phone like, is there any reward money for this nigga? I'll take a picture right now. I'll take a picture right now. Show you exactly where the fuck he at. In Daytona Beach. Right now. Right now. Come get him. Come get him. But yeah, man, the Dilla has been has had his share fair of shit going on with him. And I think the wildest shit. Uh, I, I was going to. Um, I, I started to even I started to skip this because of how crazy it sound. But I might as well. I might as well. Uh, Fury, you mentioned it earlier. But I was like I said I was gonna skip that again. As y'all, I've been trying to avoid talking about this shit. Cartel, <laughs> this shit is just dumb. Cartel, <coughs> I can barely even say this shit. A cartel member imprisoned in Colorado sues Diddy over his drug business. You can't make this shit up. Alfredo P. Gonzalez claims defamation after refusing to traffic minors. Read that part again. Alfredo P. Gonzalez claims defamation after refusing to track fic minors. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it don't get no more bolder than that. I said, look, 
you fucking up my business and I ain't trafficking these kids. Fuck that. I ain't doing it. And you fucking up my business. God damn it. He's seeking. Now, this is where shit got really ridiculous at because I'm like, why this number? I hate even saying the amount. $666,000 in damages for lost criminal contacts. Why is that the number? Somebody explain to me why it just had to be triple six thousand, hundred thousand. What somebody exp- who was sitting in the back and says it's got to be this number? Who's the accountant that came up with this number? You want to talk about putting bad luck on a number on a lawsuit? You definitely gonna win just because of how much you seeking. You could at least said I want you know seven. I want 667000 No, you said, never mind. The judge dismissed this case as frivolous and lacking standing. I guarantee you he fucking laughed at it before he did that, too. But a self-proclaimed member of the Sinolus drug cartel filed a lawsuit against hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs and Bad Boy Entertainment, alleging defamation that he claimed ruined his illicit drug business. Diddy versus Sonola cartel member. The case filed in the Southern District of New York, swiftly dismissed by Chief U.S. District Judge Laura Taylor Swain on August 12th. And Lord knows I tried to get this PDF just to laugh at it more. Alfredo P. Gonzalez, currently incarcerated uh, in Colorado, sought out for that amount of damages, asserting that Combs and his associates had tarnished his reputation. In New York's criminal underworld. This nigga think he Tony Soprano. According to Gonzalez complaint, the trouble began when he refused to assist Combs alleged request to traffic minors for parties. Let's read that again. According to Gonzalez complaint, the trouble began when he refused to assist Combs alleged requests to traffic minors for a party. Hmm. Now, I'm no rocket scientist, but forget the lawsuit part. It's that part that keep highlighting itself out to me. Exactly. They knew exactly what they were doing, putting his ass on blast. That's just the yellow highlighter part right there that you can't just skip over. He refused the traffic minus for Diddy. You just can't skip over that part. I'm, I'm like, forget the fucking lawsuit. Forget what you're asking for and why he talks. That. He asked you to do what? If I'm the feds, I'm like, oh, he, oh, ooh, he, he, oh what? <laughs> he, he, he asked you to do what now, sir? Okay. Uh, keep talking. Keep, keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Let me know. The plaintiff claimed that after declining... Uh, these purported offers, he was told his life would be made hell due to the power Combs had in the streets. Gonzalez further alleged that his led to the loss of his New York based drug business contact. So did he pers- uh, pretty much put a personal squeeze on this man's drug business? It wasn't even it wasn't even like he just fucked up his name. He actually put some, he actually put a word out in the street saying, yo, don't do business with this, that, and the third. And okay. Now, see, of course, the judge is throwing this out for frivolous and lack of stance and shit, whatnot, right? But if you are, you know, someone of the cloth and you understand certain street politics and how that might sound, you understand that that gentleman might have been telling the actual truth, especially when this isn't the first time that we've heard of the diddler using his muscle and power of his word of mouth to pretty much tarnish someone's name or pretty much get their whole reputation removed, right? This isn't the first time we've heard that. We heard this in the Cassie lawsuit. We heard this in the uh, uh, Roddy Jones lawsuit. We've heard this in so many. We, shit, we went through all 12 damn lawsuits of this nigga. 
he's pretty much said the same thing to everybody. Like, look, if you don't do what I say, this, that, and the third going to happen to you and people going to forget you and we're going to move on like you never existed. That's pretty much every single one of his lawsuits have said about him. Uh, first, she ruled that Gonzalez lacked legal standing to sue as his claims uh, injures his as his claimed injuries stemmed from illegal activities not protected by law. Additionally, the court found the claims to be frivolous, lacking an arguable basis, either in law or in fact, the judge denied Gonzalez leave to amend his complaint, stating that the defects in his lawsuit could not be cured by an amendment. Uh, these lawsuits, uh, Combs has been at the center of a stumble. So we already know that part. Of course, we ain't got to reel that. But yeah, another one, another one. But as Juju pointed out. This wasn't necessarily about, you know, why, where's all this Spanish going on in the chat here? What, what the hell happened? Um, what, what, was, what this was more so about was them putting him on blast. And he thought, yeah, he, he thought he was good. He thought he was good. But this more so puts even more light on what we have said already in the past about what the all white parties remember what i said before about these all white parties allegedly i guess we could say for record's sake have been the source of the sex trafficking and the trafficking of the minors hell we saw one of the minors at this party justin bieber did we not did we not see justin bieber blowing Oh, Be uh, Odell Beckham at one of these all white parties. Do we need to remind ourselves of that? I don't think so. I don't. I don't like to remind myself of that video. With, with Justin with his glossy lips coming up and Trey songs in the back. Tell some. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yes, we've seen Ashton Kutcher at these all white parties and Ashton Kutcher himself has, you know, been a very ashamed of him being at the all white parties. He's come out and said he's very worried. Like he's literally publicly said he's very worried of his involvement earlier back in the days with Diddy. He's extremely worried about the tapes. I'm pretty sure his wife, uh, Mila Kunis, don't give a fuck. From what I've seen and heard, I mean, you know, Mila Kunis, y'all remember Mila Kunis was passed around on the casting couch. That's where his wife came from. His wife came from the casting couch when she was 16, 17. Hell, oh, matter of fact, no. I believe the, from the story, she's about 15, 16 years old when they were shooting that shit. She wasn't even of age. She kissing all the damn, the, the whole goddamn cast. That was in the script. Kissing the whole goddamn cast. Like it was nothing. And just now you looking back on that shit 15, 20 years later, like, oh, I shouldn't have been doing that. You think? You think? All this shit has, you know, been going on. But that was very smart thinking by this cartel member to even put this to light. A lot of people do. I, I for one, feel uh, bad for the gentleman. I feel very bad for the gentleman for the simple fact that he, you know, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault. It was not his fault that this happened. This was more so a thing where you young and getting inducted into the industry and your parents just pass you the fuck off. Because they think you're going to be rich and successful as a kid. And I keep saying to myself, you know, I was a child prodigy with the rap. I've been rapping since about 12, 13 years old. Actually, yeah, about 12, 13 years old. I've been nice with it. So, and I kept saying to myself, yo, I, I could get signed. My family, listen, I ain't got to be up here and bragging about it. I mean, y'all hear the, the actual music that's on my page and shit like that. I could have very well been, you know, one of them. But 
lo and behold, God had a different plan for this brother. Because I could have easily listen. The crazy thing was back in the day, I wanted to get signed a bad boy. And I think that's when God said, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. What to do, Miss Teresa? What to do, Miss Teresa? And I wanted to be signed a bad boy at one point. God said, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I wanted to be signed a bad boy when I was young. Like 14, 15 years old when I first started and shit. So imagine if I would have got signed at like 15, 16 years old to bad boy. That's the crazy part. Imagine if I was like 15, 16 years old and got signed to fucking bad boy. I would have been Usher and Justin Bieber too. Unfortunately, God damn it. Either that or they would have killed me. Because I wouldn't have known no better back then. I wouldn't have known. I didn't become enlightened until my, uh, I want to say about, about 19, 20, 19, 20 is when I, I first started uh, looking into shit, into my rabbit hole. But yeah, before that, ignorant as hell, trying to get signed. Just trying to get signs. Number one niggas trying to get signed. You damn right I dodged that bullet. I'm glad I did too. Every day I thank God about that. But you kept me from, from being in that shit. You kept me from being in Hollywood. Kept me from being in Hollywood around that other bullshit, man. I'm glad, too. I am glad. Because I would be, you know, along with... I was thinking about earlier, you know, like Little Yachty. I, we don't got... Or, or Carisha. You know what I'm saying? His his muse, Carisha. Think, think about his muse. Did he... Did his dealer's muse, Carisha? Okay? For example. Think about her. The shit she going through. Right? Everybody getting on her right now. But rightfully so. Everybody getting on her rightfully so because excuse me. She's talking shit about the podcasters in the list that she's on. First of all, be thankful that you're even on that list. A lot of us is trying to um get ourselves to even be on that list. You know? Shameless plug. If you would like, DM me. We have live from the spot podcast t-shirts. DM me. But anyway, she is um pretty much upset that she's on this list with these podcasters and she thinks she doesn't compare to them. Newsflash, you do. You up there with the big wigs now. At the same time, be thankful that you even have a podcast left. Because last time I checked, Revolt is on its way out the goddamn door with a whole new owner. Okay? And I don't think they're going to keep Carisha Please on there. Carisha gonna be telling, asking, please herself. Can I please stay? Carisha gonna be, please, can I stay? To the owner, the new owner, Revolt. Okay, you better hope Revolt even stay around over a year or two. At what's going on right now. And furthermore, yeah, as Button already told you, you being dropped from your label soon. You need to be thankful for the shit that you even got left after what the diddler done did to you. He pretty much done tarnished your name worse than what it was already. You was already in shit in shit creek. You just kept swimming. Kept swimming and swimming and swimming and now you done realize oh shit. Literally. Now you up there with no guests doing confessionals and shit. To some part of the year. Nigga please. Then I hear now I see Yachty. Yachty crashing out, telling his own man's Mitch. Tell about some fuck you. I put 300000 in your pocket. Why you let Twitter get at me like that? Why you let Twitter get at me like that? Why did I let the internet, why did my, why did my bro that I spent, you know, years and years eating peanut butter and jelly and ramen noodles at nights with, went, waiting for us to get rich? Why would I crash out on you over some Twitter niggas? Telling me that I, I said some shit. That's my whole thing. You you crashing out over Twitter getting mad at you? That's another thing. It ain't like Mitch got mad at you on Twitter. Anybody else got mad at you. And you crash out on him? But this is my whole thing. Y'all crash both of y'all crashing out. This whole crash out era with these youngins, I tell you. I, I don't understand it. 
But this whole crashing out thing, you know who else crashing out from that whole camp? See, we got Carisha, we got Yaddy. You know who else crashed out from that camp? Quavo. That's right. See, I'm going down the line here. See, so y'all can understand what I'm saying. Offset. It's just Offset doing his... It's just Offset. That's the best way I can say that. If that's even still that nigga. You saw we covered on uh, doing Takeoff's uh, documentary. We did Takeoff's docket, I should say. We covered it the fact that I don't even think that's Offset anymore. Offset more than likely died in that car crash. And we just see an AI nigga running around right now. Or a vessel. We just see a vessel running around. Because we damn sure don't hear Offset like that. Okay? And that album cover told me a lot. You blowing up with the world upside down? That told me a lot. That's a, that's a huge subliminal. You blowing up with your world upside down. That's a huge subliminal right there. You are not in control of your own life is what you told me. Your world is blowing up with upside down. Nigga, you not in control of your own shit right now. That's what that told me. That they got rid of you in that car crash, unfortunately. Rest in peace, possibly. Okay? Quavo ain't been the same since takeoff left. Quavo got to get in, in uh, light skin beefs with Chris Brown every goddamn other year. Every other year, they even got to fight up with Coochie Tran or this new bitch. Chris Brown is tired of rapping at your ass. He a singer. He a singer. He's tired of rapping at your ass. Leave Chris alone. Chris is tired of talking to all y'all. Leave Chris alone and let him make music. Okay? But this is the thing. Coach P. Think about that, right? You ain't seen Co Coach P. You ain't seen P or Coach K in the longest. You have not seen CEO PL or Coach K in how long? You know why? Because them niggas sold that $300 million Or should I say got that $300 million With Scooter fucking Braun Of course of all people Did a deal with Scooter Braun Mr. Sex Trafficker himself Okay Did a deal with Scooter Braun over in Korea Sold the whole goddamn 300 level For $300 million Sold QC off For $300 million. And guess what You ain't heard from two, them two niggas since Okay, ever since that three hundred million dollars takeoff done passed away, Quavo gotten some bullshit, Offset just running around being Offset. Ain't with Cardi B no more. No, ain't with ain't, that whole publicity marriage is gone now, ain't it? The whole publicity marriage with Cardi B and Offset gone, right up under your eyes, just rug gone, right. Yaddy and Carisha. Shit, JT the only sane motherfucker left. And she just quiet. She just quiet throwing phones and shit at Uzi. That, that's it. JT ain't doing shit else. She chilling. Album coming out. Or should I say out already? She doing her own thing. That's the thing. Reason why JT could do her own thing is because JT always been on the hush. JT came out of jail and was on the hush. Yeah, Chris Brown did ate that nigga live and at this. Quavo ain't even come back with a response. Usually Quavo come back singing or trying to make a hit record. He couldn't even do shit. Like, damn it, this light skinned nigga bodied me. I couldn't even do shit. It not necessarily a UMG led buyout, but it was more so just they were done with the industry. They were pretty much just done with the industry. And like I said, it was very noticeable, even when I covered it, it was noticeable how it went from CEO Pierre, you know, chilling with Diddy and Diddy hosting his whole birthday party to all of a sudden the following year to you, you niggas is selling the whole QC label off. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Oh, I see this play here. But see, that's the fucked up part that I'm getting at, right? Just to bring this around full circle. The Diddler, wherever the Diddler go, he been leaving a trail of bullshit, yo, and fucking up everybody else's lives. But get ruining the cartel nigga life. Been fucking up everybody else's life around you, man. 
For real, for real. You let Pierre sell off that goddamn QC, and none of them kids around him have had direction since. From Yachty to Carisha to JT and the City Girls to fucking the whole Migos. The Migos is pretty much just done. Just done after the Diddler. Diddler went on to Motown. And then what happened? I let y'all know that too. This the very week that the Diddler went to Motown Records, we got Neff and Few. And I said, wait a minute. Why on earth all of a sudden is Takeoff and Quavo doing an album together? The same week that Diddy announces he's going to Motown. And you know how the story goes from there. You know how the story goes from there. Because then I started uncovering life insurance policies and other shit that Motown Records had. So that, like I said, it it just it's just fucked up how much shit follows this guy, man. It's fucked up how much follow him. It, it truly is at the end of the day. And furthermore, what what else has been following him? I guess you could say is you know. So apparently. A viral uh, photo has been going around of Mr. Usher. And it's actually from him being at the Met Gala. I don't know if people realize that. But it's the it's basically this picture of his pupils are missing. Usher. Hey. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you, baby. Please tell me about your look. Alexander McQueen, it's a one of one. Uh, Sean McGuire and myself decided to put this amazing thing together. Now, Been, I'm a, uh, exotic. This part right here is pretty much where everyone was zooming in on his eyes and realizing that they were missing pupils, which of course you can tell even as he's talking. Romantic, and uh, but still within the. You can pretty much see clearly the pupils are pretty much gone, but. What I also wanted to point out was the darkness that was within his mouth as well. Pause, of course. But if you look at it, it's a very demonic look. Now, even he's going to say, of course, this whole thing is a theme and it's a look or whatever, right? But how much of a theme do you even go by here? And tell me about the... the it's all a part of it. Just everything. You're looking at a... I mean, this is, this is, this is a true thought, like a cohesive, full thought, you know? Yeah. And how did you interpret the theme tonight? Just as that. Th that right there is where everyone pretty much lost their shit. I'm gonna run it back real quick. Everything you're looking at. A, I mean, this is this is this is a true thought, like a cohesive, full thought. You know? Watch his eyes. Yeah. How did you interpret the theme tonight? This is where pretty much everyone lost their shit. Is this freeze frame right here? And as I said to my boy. uh my boy will on facebook you know because he had commented and said these celebrities man they just a lot of them just they've been in hollywood so long that you know the spirit has just completely left like i, like I coming back just gone just just gone you can look in his eyes just gone that's the that's again this is another result of the diddler and yes, you can say, oh, maybe that's context because he's using a, a theme or whatever. But even down to, like I said, the teeth and the darkness in the mouth and everything like that. And just, you know, even the face turning red. And to do with the light. Usher's gone. The Usher that, you know, the, the innocent Usher. Right. Like no no, it, it's hard to even it's it's hard to even look at this some some ways because you looking at full proof of what the fuck Hollywood does to you even from young. This is full proof of what Hollywood does to you from young right here. We're talking about a kid that you know was at daddy's house young. And by daddy's house, I mean the dealer's house, of course. A lot of y'all don't remember the actual name of that. It was called Daddy's House. Okay. From there, we also talking about him, you know, 
Yeah, pretty much. Diddy's taking souls. Pretty much Diddy takes souls, yo. But pretty much from there, you have him growing up with JD. And we all seen what JD did with uh Ah, uh, why I can't think of their name now. Jump, jump, crisscross. We seen what JD did with crisscross. What grown ass man follows kids around a damn mall? JD was following them little kids around a damn mall to some of these stars. Where you? Where the hell are they parents at? And why is this stalker just run walking up to me to my some number star? Okay, but that's who helped groomed Mister Usher. Okay. Yeah, I saw him on that stage, and he pointed to the back at all them people. Who else he pointed to? L.A. Reid. We ain't going to get into L.A. Reid. We ain't, we ain't got to get. One day we are getting to his skeletons. I think I might do that next. But actually, you know, speaking of L.A. Reid, I think we might do Bling. Rihanna's, uh, Rihanna's tell-all. Coming up here soon. Um, But yeah, L.A. Reid, one of the main people. Again, has something to do with uh, his grooming. I should go on though, bro. Sad to say, and it's 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 fucked up that the lady just interviewing him, just happy to even see us. But excuse me, I'm pretty sure even she noticed. Like, damn, this is the the fucked up effects of when you just been in the light too long, and you didn't do, and you didn't go home early enough. That's the realest part about this. Like, like I said, as someone that grew up as a fan of Usher, to come to come to find out the things that he was involved in, or should I say, the things that were done to him. I can't even say involved in the things that were done to him, in the likes of Justin Bieber and other kids that just want to just grow up and be famous in the industry. That's what it all comes down to, Sally. Right? Is these were kids that wanted to just grow up and be famous in the industry, and they ran into these demonic forces. Great, great way to say that. Money ain't the thing. Yeah, I remember that album. I do remember that uh, Money Ain't Thing. Um, the song was on um, 19... It was called 1974. The album was called 1970... Soundtrack of 1974 and Money Ain't the Thing was on it. It was JD's album. I remember that album. Um, yeah, Bling is by Erica Kennedy, who, yes, who passed away. And people were wondering how Erica even passed away after she wrote that book. So, like I said, that and I have been doing some uh, audio readings of that recently. And I think we're going to actually uh, dig into that next. Is we're going to do some uh, some readings of that. Let me get a copy of that. Um, how do you discover someone and just leave them out? In that world with Diddy, it's crazy. Yeah, that's that's another thing too. Like, I'm pretty sure, like Gene Deal said, you know, his mom has to, you know, go to sleep at night with that thought. Like, damn, I let that happen to my son. Unfortunately, remember what Gene Deal was talking about the whole thing that happened to him in the hospital. I mean, we pretty much can, pick, you know, he got raped. He got raped, and it was bad. And he had to go to the hospital. Yes, Erica Kennedy was um another uh, was a friend of Kim. Um, but yeah, man, where the Diddler goes, a lot of bullshit follows. A lot of bullshit follows. A lot of bullshit follows. 